All right, so the Northridge drive fiasco from last night. Okay, we have an 1800 kilogram car. We're trying to find the force of friction acting up Northridge Drive, knowing that the cars were accelerating down at 0.45 meters per second squared. Okay, so what can I calculate right now with acceleration and mass? Net force. Net force. Okay, I'm going to need that. So F net is going to be M times A. So 0.45 times 1800. And we've got 810 newtons worth of net force. Okay. Um, we also need the force of gravity. Okay. We need the, the weight okay. acting straight down. So that's going to be m times g. 17,638? steel trap. Okay, um, and then we got to calculate F parallel, okay, which is going to be the sine of 7 degrees times 17,658 newtons. Okay, so sine of 7, 7, 6, 5, 8. Okay, so the force parallel is 2,151 newtons. Okay, and that's down the hill, obviously, because it's at parallel. Okay, can I calculate the force of friction now? Okay, vector sum of all forces. Okay. So F net is going to be F parallel plus the force of friction. So the force of friction will be F net minus F parallel. So 810 minus 2151. Okay, gives me a force of friction of 1.3 times 10 to the 3 newtons. Is that a lot? It seems kind of like a big number for cars being able to slide down Northridge Drive. Except when you really look at it, it's actually not that much. Okay, you or I could probably exert that much force pushing on a car on a level road. Okay? But if I put a car on Northridge Drive, put it in neutral, and said, stand behind it and try and push it up the hill, what's going to happen? You're going to get crushed. You're, get crushed. Okay? You're not going to be able to exert enough force to overcome F parallel. And that thing is going to roll back down the hill over you in, in, in ideal conditions. Okay? So that amount of friction, even though it sounds like a big number, really isn't when you consider how much force is acting down Northridge Drive on that, on any given day, right? That, that number, the, the F parallel, that's the number on any given day, right? But yesterday, friction wasn't sufficient to keep cars from falling back down the hill. Okay, does that sort of make sense? Okay, so the moral of the story is drive carefully, okay? If you've got a steep hill coming up, Okay, then you know you got to consider have I prepared myself and my vehicle adequately for this challenge? The answer to that question for a lot of people yesterday was no. Okay, um, and I drove I drove into Calgary last night. Okay, and it was awful, but there really weren't that many cars in the ditch where it was level. Okay, you get on that hill like if you're coming in from from Calgary. Going up to the uh, Deerfoot extension there where McLeod and Deerfoot, that's always uh, like a graveyard of cars, okay, when it gets slippery. Because as soon as you start going up the hill, that's where it goes, okay? And on the other side, going up that hill, same thing, okay? If you're going uphill, that's when people have trouble because that's where normal force goes down, okay? And if mu is already down, you're in big trouble, okay? So if you understand physics, you can drive more safely. Physics, good. All right, I would like you guys right now, because this is going to be kind of, uh, I want to go over some complex ones from your worksheets. So these are the five questions I want to go through today as a class. Inclined planes worksheet, 6, 11, and 12, especially 11. Okay, 11 actually integrates systems, like a pulley, with an inclined plane. 
All right? It's about as crazy as the Newton's second law problem will get for you. All right? And I want to be able to go over that one. Okay? And then from the forces of vector quantity worksheet, 6 and 9, especially 9, because that's going to have to do with the lab that we're going to be doing tomorrow. Okay? So those are the questions I would like you guys working on right now. I will put... Okay, so this is the inclined plane sheet. So 6, 11, and 12. I got 11 and 12 on here, but I'll scroll down for 6. Okay, so you got 6 and 9 on the board. I'll give you a little bit of time, and then I'll uh, move it up so that you can... Sorry, 6 and 11, 6, 11 and 12. You don't need 9 from this sheet. doesn't click. Okay. okay, I know it's going to be small for you, but you can also bring this up on your phone, okay, if you need to see it bigger, All right? But 6, 11, and 12. Okay, uh, from the inclined planes, and we'll go through those, and then I'll put the forces vector quantity ones up. All right, so with number six here, okay, we've got a 22 degree incline. Okay, we have Homer on the skateboard, okay, on, on this um, hill, and we know that friction is opposing with 20 newtons. Okay, we know F parallel would be acting down the ramp, okay? um, and there is a net force of 460 newtons, and um, that's all we got for right now. Okay, if I have F net, and there's only two forces contributing to F net, can I solve for the one I don't have? Yes, I can. Okay. So I'm going to solve for F parallel right now using the vector sum of all forces. F net is going to be F parallel plus the force of friction. So that's going to be F net minus the force of friction equals F parallel. Now, if you thought that Homer may have lost a few pounds on the way down, this is probably where you made your mistake. If you were off by just a tiny, tiny bit, this is probably where you made your mistake. Okay. I'm going to make down the hill positive, so 460 newtons, minus negative 20, because friction is up the ramp. Right? That is going to give me an F parallel of 480 newtons. Okay. Now, you might be looking at this and going, so what, Coderre? How does that help me? I'm looking for mass. Okay, well, here's how it helps you. I now know what F parallel is. It's 480 newtons. Can that help me get the force of gravity, which would be Homer's weight? Can I use Homer's weight to get his mass? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to solve for Fg. Okay. I'm going to say that the sine of 22 degrees equals 480 over Fg, and just manipulate for Fg. All right. So that's going to be 480. Okay divided by the sine, whoop, divided by the sine of uh, 22 degrees. There is Homer's weight. It's almost the same as the force of friction that was acting up Northbridge Drive in the last question. Because Homer's, well, big. Okay? His weight has been on the Simpsons uh, established as anywhere between 260 and 300 and some pounds. Okay, so he's a big guy, okay? If I divide that force of gravity, that weight, by 9.81, I get that Homer has a mass of 131 kilograms. That is 287 pounds. Okay, he's a big guy. Okay, everybody follow how that one worked? Yes. Okay, I will put those questions back on the board and you guys can uh, <laughs> give the rest of them a try there. 11 is gonna be tricky. Oh, we're trying to find the A. 
Okay, so the first thing we have to look at with this question is we have to identify the forces that are involved in moving the system. Remember, this is a system. There are two masses involved. Okay? Gravity is going to act on this mass. All right? And we are told that this mass is 2.5 kilograms. Okay? So the force of gravity acting on that mass is 24.525 newtons. Okay. What's this force? F parallel. I don't know what that force is, but I can calculate it because I also know the mass of this one, which means I can get the weight. Okay. I don't need the normal force, but I can get F parallel off of this because I know that it's angled at 30 degrees. Okay, so since this is 2.0 kilograms, okay, I know that this side here is 19.62 newtons. Okay, when I want to find that parallel, that's going to be the sine of 30, which is 0.5, times 19.62, which is 9.81 newtons. All right, so I know I've got 9.81 newtons worth of force going this way. 24.525 newtons of force going this way. Are those acting in opposition to each other? Yes. Yes. Okay. Because there's there's a pulley in the middle. All right. Now, are both of those masses going to accelerate at the same rate? Yep. Are they both affected by the net force in the system? That's the thing we have to remember about this question. It's not an overly difficult inclined plane question, but because we throw in the system part of it, people get thrown, okay? They usually figure out this force of gravity. They usually figure out that that's pulling the system, but then they forget about this mass when they finish it up, okay? So I can calculate the net force in this system. It's gonna be F parallel plus the force of gravity, but one's positive, one's negative, okay? So F parallel, I'm gonna make negative because it's down the ramp, okay? Plus the 24.525, going the other way. Okay, so when I do that, okay, I've got 14.715 newtons, okay, as my net force in the system. All right, if I want to get the acceleration of mass one, I'm going to take that net force and divide by the mass of the system, 4.5 kilograms, All right? If I do that, 14.715 divided by 4.5 kilograms, I should get 3.3 meters per second squared. And because it asked about mass one, that is up the ramp. Okay, I will tell you right now, guys, that question has been on the final exam more than once, okay? We try and do that actually, not to make the final exam difficult, but to try and shorten it by testing more than one concept in a single question. This tests inclined planes, Newton's second law, and systems in one question rather than three separate questions, okay? All right, um, how are we doing with number 12? It's easy, have not started. Have not started, okay. <laughs> Okay, give me a few minutes on 12 here. Okay, uh, we may not get to 6 and 9 from the forces of vector quantity, but uh, we can always have a look at those another day if we don't get to them. If you're done 12, then try 6 and 9 from the other sheet. What? It's the 